everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this week I will be discussing uh, Pridak. This was a character I created during my time at LEGO uh, as a designer on the Bionicle team. I was hired at LEGO in 2004. I joined the Bionicle team in 2006, mid-2006. So this was the first character uh, I went on to create for the Bionicle toy line. Okay, so uh, Pridak is clearly inspired by a shark and a piranha mix. Um, this was, uh, the reasoning behind this was, goes back to uh, the team bonding story. Um, when I joined Bionicle, uh, they thought it would be a good idea to have us go on a team bonding exercise to introduce the team to me and get to know each other. And since we knew the, uh, the next chapter of Bionicle would be going underwater, the team thought it would be great to go to a dive tank uh, with live sharks, manta rays, um, sea life, everything. So went to the northern tip of Denmark, strapped on scuba suits and got into this massive aquarium tank with uh, all the sea life. The reason I was kind of drawn towards the shark inspiration for this is because of an incident I had where I was trying to adjust uh, my vest, my regulator, and my uh, buoyancy control device, which allows you to float. And uh, I let out too much air and I sank immediately to the bottom of a 20 foot tank and I landed on a six foot shark. And a uh, pretty terrifying incident. It, um, I, being trapped like an anchor underwater and landing on a shark in a dust cloud and everything kicking up, pretty scary. So that is sort of why I was drawn to kind of go towards this character. And so after that incident, you'll see in some of the concept art, um, I kind of came back and did uh, just some real quick rough silhouettes of what the potential lineup of characters could look like. But mainly I was trying to nail down a silhouette for, uh, for Pridak. You'll see in some of the concept art for Pridak as well, uh, some of the early hand sculpts I would do. Um, so I was very hands-on with, um, normally we would kit bash these things. Uh, I also like to use Sculpey to sometimes create new pieces that way, but kit bashing we would, you know, just snip some of the pre-existing bionicle parts, glue them together to kind of hack together something we thought the new figure would, you know, um, possibly look like. Uh, just very quick, down and dirty, rough modeling. Um, so we were cutting a lot of Bionicle parts, um, hot gluing them together. I, I think it would have made a lot of Bionicle fans cry, but very cool stuff to see. You'll see some of the, the process here. His design is, uh, you know, it is not the original design I had, actually. Um, the I'm, I'm fully aware of the criticisms of Pridek. Totally fine, I get it. Uh, one of the main criticisms was uh, this sort of this middle ball joint that the character could easily flop over. Absolutely valid. Um, I was trying to approach it from a different angle as a new designer on Bionicle. I wanted to give a little more articulation. Previous designs of Bionicle had uh, a little more stiff midsection. You had articulation in the arms, but couldn't do much with uh, the torso. So the original design of this actually had sort of a double ball joint spine. Unfortunately, because of uh, trying to hit our price points on the figures, uh, one of the larger uh, products in the Bionicle assortment that year came in over budget. So what ended up happening is the smaller figures, the six Baraki, um, we had to go in and sort of reconfigure our models to sort of save a little bit of money. So that was the, unfortunately, that was the first thing to go. I don't completely remember how I had it designed, but I, 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 got, a, I got a bag of random parts off Amazon. I'm going to go through here, see if I can just pull out some parts and kind of give you guys an idea of uh, what the original spine sort of looked like. This here kind of I took it and sort of integrated it in sort of something like this. Uh, I remember his shoulders were a little wider, um, so he had a little more of a stance. Um, the midsection was a little beefier, it was much stronger, so he didn't just like 
flop over. You can see the, the movement that it gave him was far greater than what he ended up with. Because in previous, previous iterations, it would just be kind of like you had a torso and maybe just like a stiff lower body thing. And the only thing that would move would be the legs. Um, this is what I was trying to uh, really bring something new into the mix. So rather than just one big piece utilizing more ball joint and socket pieces. Yeah, it's not totally, the, like I said, I don't have any of the design photos from like 20 years ago, but I'll leave that up to the uh, fan community if they wanna do that. They could probably do this way better than I could uh, now. Another thing, which was kind of unfortunate, something that got changed uh, for safety concerns was the squid launcher. Clearly people were not pleased with the squid launcher at the end, but I can tell you the, the first iteration of the squid launcher worked phenomenally well. This thing was incredible. It was so good. That's why safety uh, was a little scared. Someone might actually uh, injure themselves with it. So they have a test at Lego. It's like, it's like a tin foil test, which replicates, um, uh, sort of like the tissue of the human eye, I believe. And it would break the foil, it was breaking the foil. So um, they had to almost install a fail into it. That was kind of the downside. So you notice when you would pull back on the squid, it would kind of flop out. That's because uh, originally it was like a, it was a perfect slingshot. You could pull this thing back and testing these things, we would shoot them uh, probably up to 20 to 30 yards, and they were very accurate. Um, so, I mean, the first batch of these things that came out of um, testing were, were incredible, and we just were, we were blown away. We were excited that people were uh, gonna get to see what we saw, but unfortunately for safety concerns, that had to get cut. So, um, I'm not sure if there's any videos out there that exist of the original uh, squid launchers if someone has from Lego has leaked to them or anything but they were uh, they were flawless they were like one of the coolest weapons um, and uh, just a lot of fun we would we would test them all the time and so there was just like these things constantly flying across the office these little squid there was a bit of controversy around this character uh, when it came out mainly due to the red coloring um, it's it's been said, it's, I know it's out there. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, the, the gatekeeper of Bionicle, Greg Farsty. I was at Comic-Con uh, in 2007, and I had a conversation with him showing him what Pridak looked like. And uh, I did say that, obviously because he's a shark and piranha, the idea of it being blood was there. Now, was I thinking these were like war wounds or something from slaying enemies that that wasn't the intent it was just that it was an inspiration uh, when i think of great whites and piranhas it was definitely not trying to uh, scare small children but uh, the part two of that was also that in previous iterations uh, the white figure was always paired up with a blue color so generally the white figure would have uh, a secondary color of blue and then the legs or something would be accented in black. And since this was kind of a new take, we're doing something a little different, the freaks from the deep, let's go a complete 1-8, let's do something totally different. So I wanted to inject, you know, literally, uh, a bit of red, and I thought it would just be something striking and different. It did come across as blood. Like I said, that was the original inspiration, but it was never meant to be, here's a bloody figure. Um, so if that clears anything up, hopefully that clears it up. But obviously you can see it as war paint, the same way someone going into battle might smear something across their face or possible skin coloration. Uh, sea life does have incredible color combinations. So it's just kind of something like that um, that was infused into him. Uh, you know, we would read the BZ power forums where all the 
mega diehard Bionicle fans were. Um, so when when Predac came out, or when this line was first being shown off, um, the designers, we would all sit around and read each other's worst, the worst comments about our figures, and we would just have a good laugh about what everybody was saying. Um, so we would, we would read your guys' comments, and uh, we would try to find the most brutal one and then uh, share that with the whole team for everybody's figure, which uh, that was always fun. It's uh, always good to laugh at yourself. An additional uh, aspect of being on the Bionicle team when I was brought on, um, I was given the option to also work on the packaging. And uh, I jumped at the chance because any, any ideas going into the character, uh, I like to try to give uh, a more holistic approach as to everything is then informed by those decisions. Um, so I was trying to infuse something different with um, on the packaging team with this design. Uh, even though now this this version is kind of like a rock bed crusted rock bed with uh, this sort of textured something bubbling up from under the surface of the ocean floor. The original idea, um, as I'll toss up in some concept artwork, was more of like a bacteriophage. This sort of parasitic creature with a virus load inside of it. And on a microscopic level, this possibly being something that had infected uh, the Baraki and had kind of turned them feral and just beast-like, these, these freaks. So unfortunately, we couldn't get it to quite work out, but it had more of like a face-huggery kind of uh, spider crab leg base. And then this was the monster body here with like veins and kind of virusy looking stuff. I also would sculpt um, iterations of this before it got into any um, 3D modeling or anything. So I did a lot of um, hand sculpting to try to relay my design thoughts. The package as well, um, just trying to do something brand new and different. You can see, you know, it on a shelf where everything it is filled with vertical square boxes, a whole row of Bionicle packages like this, angled, definitely draws the eye right to it. You could just stand in an aisle and see it. So everything about this Baraki line uh, coming into it, just trying to change it up. Uh, that, that's what I was trying to bring to the team. Um, it was just something new and different. Very cool experience. I'm so thankful um, for the opportunity to have joined the Bionicle team and a bunch of great guys. Um, it's one of my fondest memories of my time with the Lego company. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you liked about this episode and if you decide to try to build the double spine version of Predac, I'd love to see photos and I hope to see you back next week for the next one. Thanks again. Bye.